This is defending the Immaculate. Together, we defend the honor of our Blessed Mother. Mary as in total enmity with Satan. Why would this make her immaculate? If this is true, that Mary is in total enmity with Satan, I think it would make her immaculately conceived. And this is why. Fallen humanity is described as in slavery to Satan. That's clear in St. Paul's epistles. And as in Satan's possession. Right, that is quoting the, the parable or the analogy that our Lord gives of the strong man. The strong man who has all of the things in his house, but then the stronger man comes and conquers. So the strong man is Satan in that parable. The stronger man is our Lord who robs the strong man Satan and brings back humanity, all things really, from Satan's horrible dominion. Our Lord also describes sinners as having Satan as their father. He says that to the Pharisees, doesn't he? In John 8, 44. Slavery to Satan means and brings about slavery to sin. Our Lord says that anyone who commits sin is a slave, a slave to Satan, clearly. And St. Paul describes that reality of being a slave of the evil one through sin, through committing sin. The good news in Christianity is that baptized Christians are no longer slaves. They are in grace, but they are warned against slipping back into sin and Satan's power. St. Peter talks about this, about the devil prowling around like a roaring lion, looking to someone to eat. If Mary is defined as in total hostility to Satan, therefore she would be someone who is free from sin. As I've just said here, that slavery to Satan, being under Satan's dominion, means being under the dominion of sin. But if Our Lady is defined in Scripture as in total enmity, total hostility with Satan, she can't be someone underneath him, someone who is one of his slaves. Otherwise, she's not in enmity. She is in his dominion. If she is competing with him, fighting against him, dueling with him, she's not one of his slaves like fallen humanity. Our Lord Jesus Christ was free from Satan's power and free from sin. We know that in the Gospels, don't we? We know that from his divinity, but also we see that in the temptation narratives in the desert. Our Lord will not be defeated by Satan. And if Mary is paired with Jesus in like enmity with the devil, then it signifies that like her son, she too is free from his dominion and therefore free from sin. So those are the things we're going to be looking for in these scriptures now. Do we see the Virgin Mary as defined as in total enmity with Satan? Do we see her paired with our Lord in a like hostility with Satan, knowing that our Lord's hostility meant his, his freedom from Satan's dominion and freedom from sin? Let's see the evidence. Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. In some translations, some of the oldest translations, we actually read, she shall bruise your head. Some of the oldest translations have that. It's quite unknown in the Hebrew whether it was a he or a she. But most, most modern translations put a he because we're thinking of the seed, our Lord being the one that crushes Satan's head through the cross, through the victory. But actually the, the ancient manuscripts could have she as much, which would mean Our Lady having this victory over Satan and doing that through, through giving birth to Our Lord, of course. But even if, 
it, it, it is he rather than she, or even if there's an ambiguity, a deliberate ang ambiguity, which could mean he or she. It's the first part of the verse that makes the same point. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. There's a dual enmity here. An enmity between Our Lady and Satan and Our Lord and Satan. That's what we're seeing here. A like enmity. And our Lord's enmity with Satan means his victory over Satan. He's not in dominion. He is victorious. So Our Lady is in total enmity with Satan. So therefore, she cannot be someone who is considered as being one of his slaves under sin. Revelation 12, 17. Then the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring, on those who keep the commandments of God and bear testimony to Jesus. So again, this shows the enmity in play, the anger of the dragon against the woman. He doesn't need to be angry against one of his slaves, but Our Lady isn't one of his slaves. She proves through her holy life that she was free from sin. She was his enemy in total enmity with him. Again, this is hinted to in the Magnificat where Our Lady says, He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. Speaking of herself, speaking of herself, how the evil ones has been scattered. He's been cast from his throne as she, the lowly one, the immaculate, has crushed him by giving birth to her son. And therefore, like our Lord, she's free from sin. She is the immaculate. May the immaculate Virgin Mary intercede for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.